What's up YouTube? Today we are going to work on the slave cylinder prep. All right, I bought a new slave cylinder and I have an eighth inch roll pin punch. I have the Willwood uh, clutch master cylinder lines. I have the feed line and the quick bleed line. The feed line goes on the bottom where the roll pin needs to be punched out and the bleed goes on the top. I have a hammer to knock out the punch, or the roll out, knock out the roll pin. I have a 7 16 and a 13 millimeter. The 7 16 will loosen this one. The 13 millimeter will tighten this one. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put this one on uh, for the bleed, and I'll plug that one in for the feed. First thing I need to do is punch out the roll pin. All right, I have the slave cylinder on some wood to give it some space. Hit in the eighth inch roll pin punch. It knocked right out. And there it is, punched out nice and clean. All right, with the roll pin punched out, you just pull this out and there is a rubber gasket in here. We need to get that out. All right, with a pick, you just pull it right on out. All right, with the supplied Willwood feed line you have the one with the rubber grommet you just put that in on the bottom and push it in till it seats in all right took a took a second try to get it on in there but and it took two tries to get on in there but you want to make sure you get the roll pin just back flush just give a tug on the housing to make sure it's in there. If it's not, it will come sliding right out. That's what happened the first time. We got that pin. Now let's move on to the bleed. Now taking the bleed off should not require a lot of pressure. Shouldn't be on so tight. But I got my 7 16 or 11 millimeter. And just Pull it off and get it out. As you can notice, these threads are fairly coarse. And that's what we're gonna use on the packet that came with it. You have a you have a tapered in that will go into the line and then you have a washer and a little more coarse and that's going to go on the slave cylinder. You just get it started. Get your 13. Get it on there and just get it just get it snug. You don't need it too tight. And that's it. You can get a little bit, there we go, a little bit tighter. When you're ready, you can put on the bleed line. Um, I'm gonna wait until I'm ready to put the slave cylinder into the trans. I'm not quite there yet. Uh, speaking of the trans, well, let's get some of the ears cut off. All right, in order to prep the trans, uh, of course, I'm going to change the slave cylinder. I'm going to clean all this up, but I'm going to do that when the engine is a little bit ready. I need to trim these two ears, these two ears off. So I need to take this uh, ventilation 
valve or whatever it is off so I can wheel those. And one more over on this side. And of course you don't want anything on the top. So let's get the cut nose. I got the, the ear off on this side, should be low enough, and I got the two ears off on this side. That is all the prep you have to do for the transmission as far as getting it to seat. Uh, of course you gotta bang out the, the tunnel let's go ahead and get this vent bolted back up and then we're ready to clean it up all right with all the research that i've done with the t56 they were all saying get the gto get the gto the shifters in the right spot but it is not in the right spot on the camaro the normal camaro one it sits in this area and it's a little bit too far forward on the 240 and then the hole goes back and this one sits the GTO a little bit too far back so the solution is I got a MGW Camaro short shifter which has a little <clears throat> gold piece that will actually push it back to where it's perfectly in the center. Uh, the one thing I do have to do though is because this is a GTO it has the bushing inside that holds the shifter on the GTO it's a little bit longer so I had to buy the little bit shorter one for the Camaro and I'll get all that done when it comes in I'm still waiting for that. Um, but that will allow you for saving some time and getting the shift right in there. You can try to do your own and custom, you know, custom one, but you know, the MGM, the MGW one was, was 200 bucks. It was not so expensive. The, the little cap, uh, in thing inside the transmission is, it was like 50 bucks from the gearbox, uh, .com or .org, something like that and it has a roll pin so we'll use the roll pin punch like we did prepping the slave cylinder and then we'll put the new one in there and we'll leave the shifter off we'll just cover it up when we go to put it in so other than that we got to get all this cleaned up this is pretty all gunked up and once we get all this cleaned up we'll be able to uh We'll be ready for it to go back on the engine. You can see, you can kind of see, it's kind of dark. It's actually getting a good bit cleaner. Three days later. All right, we're gonna finish up on the transmission prep. And we need to probably finish cleaning this up a little bit and inside the bell housing, change the slave cylinder to the one that uh, we prepped with the, the sicky feed lines and uh, and a quick bleeder. We have a new slave cylinder, so we just need to take this one off. And that is a couple 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts. Of course, we're gonna reuse these 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts for the new slave cylinder. It's just a stock replacement. 
that we modified with our sicky stuff. I grab that and should slide right on out. It's our line. Oh, I'm not worried about bending this. There we go. Well, that's the old one. It probably still, you know, had some life to it, but I mean, seriously, why bother? You're already in here. You got everything taken apart. You already have to put, you know, you already have to change the stuff on here already. So just put new stuff on there. All right, so our feed, line goes through the bottom there we go and then our bleed we're just going to stick through the top the reason why we're putting it on after this bracket, I mean, it's already on and this hole is pretty small, so we just install it after. All right, so line up your slave cylinder, put the 10 millimeters back in. And I'm not sure if these need to be torqued down. I mean, I'm sure they need to be torqued down to something but I'm just doing it a little bit tight probably around I think around 18 18 foot pounds all right so with that on slide your bleeder your quick bleed through Screw that on. This is going to use a 14. And you just need to get this snug. You don't want to strip it out. make it a little bit tight. This is spinning just a little bit. So I can get a 13 and the 14 and just tighten that down. All right, because I'm not actually putting the engine in quite yet, I want to protect this just from getting dirty and debris and stuff like that. So I'm going to cover it with this cheap old garbage bag. And this will be good. I plan on putting the engine in maybe, I don't know, tomorrow or next weekend, depending on when I can get some free time. I gotta see if I can finish prepping. All right, now let's go to the shifter.